these weekly dividend ETFs are making me a lot of money. Their their percentage return is is pretty phenomenal. And I'm going to go over all of that and more. We're going to look at every single chart for these ones because all eight of these weekly paying dividend ETFs, I some of them do better than others, but we're going to talk about it. I, I, get, I get too excited because they are back positive. We can see the total assets, $844 off of an $800 investment. But all that being said, if you guys are fans of ETF investing, of dividend investing, of stock investing, of everything investment related and related to making money, don't forget to like the video to let me know you love this series and to subscribe because it helps me out a bunch, helps me grow the channel. And we're trying to hit that 4,000 mark before we hit 2025, which is crazy. You guys have been so supportive. So all that being said, let's roll the intro. So before I go into the individual positions, check this out. My first purchase, I'm going to pull up a lot of data for you guys. Nope, not my contacts, not this. Um, my order status, so transactions. This is where it tells me on Moomoo where I paid out, how much I bought, all this kind of stuff. So I did have some comments saying, oh, you're adding more money to the account. I am not, I promise. Um, this is the return that we've seen. So we can see I bought all of these. We saw them ordered, um, filled two shares, three shares, October 2, October 2, October 2, October 2. So what, we are in week eight or nine. I think we're in eight of this series now. I'm not tracking it well enough, apparently. And we are up $44.48. To give some background to those of you that might be new to the channel, I invested close to $100. I couldn't get it exact 100 because I didn't have fractional shares on some of these. But we have drip on for YMAG and YMAX. We're tracking their progress from the initial investment. And I actually made a purchase this week with the account. I purchased another share of QDTE. So that's the largest market value that we've seen. I'm going to continue to track the overall return and I will include this in the initial value. So all this will be tracked. Don't, don't worry about it. We have seen some winners. We have seen some losers, but all in all, we are up 5.56%, 5.56% in under two months. So if we multiply this by six for the year, cause we've been doing it for two months, you're looking at a 33.36% return. Now, Keep listening to me. Keep listening. Some of the ETFs are negative. So if we did this with just the positive ETFs, imagine what we would see. I shouldn't say some are negative. Some are just significantly less positive than others. Ugh. And I'll go over that at the end of the video. I am really excited. This channel, uh, um, I've been really happy with the content that's been coming out just based off these weekly ETFs. And I appreciate you guys for watching. So let's dive into each ETF, talk about the return we've seen so far. And then at the end, we'll go over every single dividend, what has made us the most money, the least money, and all of that nerd stuff that you guys actually seem to enjoy. So jumping in, we're gonna go to IWMY first. So we can see IWMY continuing to be the worst. It is down 4.68% and the total PL is down $4.86. Not a terrible loss, to be honest, because of the dividends that have been paid out. And it's probably still positive. I'd have to look at the last dividend, but I will show you all that information at the end. But it's just kind of trading sideways. That's what we've seen. It was positive by like a couple cents last time I ran the calculation on it. And so I'm not happy with it, but it could be, it could be worse. People said these were gonna lose a ton of money and so far, not really. Um, so, they are losing NAV. That's the problem. The NAV erosion is consistently dropping. We just had a dividend payout, paid out 32 cents a share, which is good. But the AUM is 120. Assets under management continues to grow. The dividend yield also continues to grow at 113%. That's insane. It's not going to pay that out. It's going to conti continue to drop, which is unfortunate. At least that's what it looks like it's doing. But the last four dividends were 31 and a half cents, 33 cents, 42 cents, and now 32. So this one actually is a little bit even lower. It's not the lowest that we've seen, but it's nowhere near the highest. It's one of the lower end ones. But because it had such a crazy dividend last week, I was kind of half expecting it. So IWMY, not happy with it. Not too sad with it. I wanted these ones to, to do better. If you aren't familiar with these funds, I have some videos on them. These ones sell, they sell cash secured puts and they just been, they've been underperforming the other ones, but our market has been very, very green. So that may be part of this. If we see a reversal, we see the market start to, to trend downward. Maybe these would do better, I don't know. But we'll jump into the next one. QQQY, we have seen this one drop as well. It's down 3.54%. 
Again, not terrible. It's probably positive overall. And this one has been trading a bit more sideways. And so when I say trading sideways, what I mean is we used to see this pay out the dividend, drop like crazy, kind of trade back up, but it never got back to the price before the previous dividend. And that was the problem, meaning you're going to lose money over time. So we have seen a few weeks where it has been able to kind of hold up, but it still is is kind of dropping. So it's dropping at a lower rate, which is fine. That's better for the ETF. That means we are saving more of our capital because the dividends are still getting paid out, but it also could just be like an influx of money into the ETF as well. So the AUM 185 bigger, quite a bit bigger than some of the other ones. I think it's the largest defiance ETF and a yield of 86.5%, which is not sustainable whatsoever. We can check the last four dividends, 25 cents. Oh, let me, sh I'm shrinking. Let me shrink. 25 cents per share, 25 and a half, 25 and a half. And then we had 26 and a half. And then we had 34 cents and then 24 cents. Wow. A big drop off, but the dividend prior was pretty huge. So I wasn't surprised by that. Although some of the other ones did do really well. So I'm not sure if it's just the defiance ones. I guess we'll see with our next one, which is WDTE. So we can see we're down 1.94% on WDTE. It is the biggest winner of the losers. So you'll notice the only ones in the red are the defiance ETFs. And this is pretty crazy because these are paying out weekly dividends. So look at this. Look at WiMAX. I'm jumping ahead. It's up 5% and it pays out a huge dividend every single week. But WDTE, we'll get to that one. We'll get to WiMAX, I promise. We can see AUM lower, just under 80 at 78 million and a dividend yield also lower at 53.6%. At and trading a little bit better, actually. We did have a really good week last week. And so it did pay out this dividend. Um, but the last couple of dividends we've seen, 25 cents, 29 cents, rounding up a little bit, 33 and a half cents, and now 24 and a half cents. So on the lower end of their dividends, probably, is this actually the lowest that we've seen? I think it is the lowest dividend that we've seen. So I don't like to see that, but because it is trading sideways, I'm okay with it. It is the biggest, it is the smallest loser that we've seen so far. Now we're going to move into the round hill funds, which have been absolutely astronomical in this account. Some better than others just within the round hill group. But I recently put out a video on a prospectus that was put out by Roundhill to make more ETFs that pay weekly. So if you're interested, I'll link that video at the end of this one. They're not out yet, but that's how it works. They're not definitely even going to come to the market. That's how the whole prospectus thing works. It's mean they're, they're filing for it, but it doesn't mean they have to do it. Um, but if you're interested, check that one out at the end, wait until the end of the video, because this week was pretty, pretty crazy with our returns. So looking at QDTE, I'm starting with the big one here because we put more money into this one. I did buy another share. So now we're at three. We're at $127.80 with this one. Um, drip is not on, but I'm going to keep dripping the defiance funds into the ones that are actually making money so that we can hopefully continue to make money and not lose money because defiance seems to forget that sometimes. But we are positive by 0.5%. I believe that our purchase price was a little bit, our, our, of the, the most recent share was a little bit above. So it could have pulled that unrealized P&L down. But we see a really healthy chart. Yes, we've seen some drop. We've seen it go from $47 to 42 and a half, which isn't great. But look at the volume on this thing. It's crazy. The volume has skyrocketed since the weekly ETFs became really, really popular. And so the market does have a big role in how these things do trade. But just checking it out, we can see huge AUM of 555, 554 million and a dividend yield of about 24.76%, which we'll figure that out later. But I do think that, I think it's even higher. On my most recent QDTE video, it was higher and I was very impressed by how high it was. Um, I think it was in the 30s. And so I have those videos as well. If you want to check that out on the channel, it's all on there for free for you guys, of course. And so I'm, I'm happy with the return we've seen with QDTE in the channel, um, not in the channel, in this challenge, I mean. And so that's why I did purchase another share. Next, I will be buying another share of either XDTE or RDTE, whichever one probably is cheaper, probably XDTE, and then so on and so forth, cycling between the three while hoping that my Defiance ETFs don't lose all their value. But all in all, yes, like I said, I'm happy with this one. Last four dividends, we see 20.5 cents. We see 26 and a half cents. We see 25.3 cents and 25.3 cents. So not a crazy drop, but also not a super high dividend, but uh, actually a little bit on the higher side from the ones that we have seen. More so right in the middle. 
which I'm fine with. I don't need a new high every single week if they can maintain their nav. That's what's key with these things. So let's jump into XDTE, which has a pretty solid return as well. Still only two shares, but a return of 1.57%, making us $1.64, not including dividends, which is wild. And we can see that we still have just the two shares pulling up XDTE's chart. Much better chart. Probably the best chart of any of the weekly payers, I would say. It is... Is it at all-time highs? Let's see. 52-week high, 53.28. No, we're a little bit below it by, yeah, just barely below. But it'll come back. It'll come back. This one was the high, it looks like. So definitely pumped about that. Nearing all-time highs is always good as long as they continue to trade upwards slightly. You still recoup some of that gain from holding the stock overnight with the zero DTE calls. We see an AUM smaller than QDTE, but still very large, larger than the Defiance ones, 240 million and a dividend yield of 15.81%. So the rumor going around was that XDTE would be better for the long run because you'd get more price appreciation in the stock value as well as solid dividends. And I'm not saying that that is wrong. I'm just saying that both have been performing really, really well. We'll see the data for just the last couple of months when we get to the spreadsheet, but I am happy with XDTE as well. Last four dividends, 15 and a half cents, 21.4 cents. We see 27.4 cents and we see 25.8 cents. So we've seen a large dividend, 25.8. Yeah, so just two cents smaller than the prior one before it was in the 20s and 15s. So a great dividend from XTTE, again, on the higher end. And this is just making me more money and soon I'll be able to buy another share of XTTE. So let me know in the comments if you guys prefer one of the round hill funds over the others, because right now QDTE is standing out, but RDTE has been doing phenomenally as well. But I also can't just count out XDTE because look at the returns that we've seen. RDTE was the winner last week. I think it was our most positive. And although it is in second place now, just in price appreciation, we'll see with the dividends. Now, looking at it, we're up $2.66, a 3.02% return. We have two shares, $91 market value. The market value has fallen a little bit, but not enough to really, really worry. We can go to the one year, the three month is kind of the same because again, it hasn't been trading for that long and it's positive, continues to trend upward, which I love to see. I think that RDTE will always have a prettier chart because people already knew about QDTE and XDTE when this one launched. So it already had fans. Roundhill already had a fan base and so RDTE quickly swooped up and the AUM has continued to grow 111 million and a low dividend because they can't fully calculate it because there's not enough return yet. We haven't seen enough distributions provided. So the distribution, I believe it's close to the 30s as well. I'll put a video out on this one if you're interested. I was waiting for a few more dividends, but I think we have enough now. Um, but let's look at these dividends. So we saw 25.7 cents, 26 cents. See, Kimball uses his window. He made that, he tore my blinds. But anyways, 26 cents, 33 cents, and 41 cents RDTE with an insane dividend. This has got to be the highest one it's paid yet. It is. And so I was interested. There were some comments. And even, even when I call out comments, this is not saying that they're wrong. I'm not calling them out to be wrong. It's just interesting because I got comments saying, oh, RDTE's first dividends were really high because they wanted to boost the fund. It won't continue. But it has. We've seen some phenomenal dividends and we've seen some all-time high dividends now too. So they're doing something right with the fund. And now that being said, maybe it trails off from here on out. I don't know. I'm not a wizard. I can't predict the future. Can wizards predict the future? Anyways, I'm happy with it. We saw some crazy buying. It always is going to buy probably after the dividend does pay out. So I'm not surprised by that. But again, a really solid return from a really solid fund, albeit a new one. I may have switched up the order. I usually do YMAX second or, or the YieldMax fund second, but their return has been insane. So I moved them to last place this time. So we're looking at YMAG first. We can see our drip is on. We have 5.1 shares of YMAG now, and we're positive by 0.46% and 0 0.45 cents, really big winner price action wise. And so we can see our second buy was right here. We actually lowered our cost basis. How did this happen? Oh, cause it, this one has had two drips so far. So no, we did raise our cost basis with these last two recent purchases, but that's okay. Cause drip, that's what drip is all about. I really like that we can see the drip continuing on here. And so moving on forward, we see an AUM of 241 million, rather large, and a dividend yield of 33, almost 34%. And I believe that one does hold up. I will be putting out videos on YMAX and YMAG in the near future because they seem to be popular funds and I like them. And so I like talking about them. But last couple of dividends, we can see 15 cents a share, 21 cents a share, 
20 cents a share, 21 cents a share, sorry. And last one was six cents a share. Now people sometimes freak out with YMAG because of this, but YMAG is only made up of seven funds. So it's the seven main big stocks that Yieldmax writes their calls on. And so the way they pay out dividends, those seven underlying ETFs only pay out monthly. YMAG holds all of them, so they get paid out weekly in certain instances. And sometimes the weeks are more than others. Because let's say you have three pay out one week and one pay out the next week, you're going to see a huge disparity between the dividends. So if you see a six cent dividend, don't freak out. It's how this works. It's how these two funds work because these are not typical. They're not the same as either the Roundhill or the Defiance ETFs and how they work their options. So I'm still very happy with this low dividend, solid price return that we've seen so far. We'll check it at the end and see how much money we've actually made. Now let's go to Y Max because I know you guys were waiting for that one and I was too. Our winner in the account up 5.07%. We've made $4.49 crazy compared to our biggest loser. So 5% positive, 4.7% negative. Yield max is a 10% swing if you bought one over the other. Yield max has been doing really well. I'm happy with it. You guys converted me. I was only a fan of YMAG and now I am a fan of YMAX as well. Is YMAG still my favorite? I don't know. Now it's really hard to tell. Um, and with the new Roundhill funds, I don't know if any of these are going to be my favorite because they're putting out tech or they're saying they could release 10 new ones. But YMAX until then is going to keep making me money, it seems. Pretty healthy chart. We did see it switch to the weeklies. And since switching to the weeklies, we've seen some great returns. And that's what I expected. The weekly option calls are better. They're working better than they were when they were doing the monthly calls. And so I'm happy with that. Very, very happy. Huge AUM of $240 million. I think it's the second largest in the account behind QDTE. And a dividend yield of 35%. Now, really, really interesting stuff. I really... Like I said, it's just, it's been solid. That's all I can really say. I don't want to repeat myself a thousand times, but I'm really, I'm happy with a lot of these. We can see 22.5 cents. We saw lower 12 cents a share, 15.2. And now we see 24. So a huge return. And Y max is the yield max. In, it's like the fun, the universe fund. So it owns a bunch of different yield max funds. And so this one, the dividend again can be all over the place. It's a little bit less of a disparity because yield mag only holds seven, whereas yield max holds more than seven. It's, it's more linked to, I think there's some Bitcoin stuff in there as well, which is really, really interesting, but a really solid return price appreciation wise. And this is probably why, because they do hold Bitcoin or in a way they hold Bitcoin. And so that's probably why we've seen it jump so high percentage wise. And so now we're going to jump into the ETF spreadsheet that has all of our data collected. And so we're going to slide right over there. I do want to point out that I am doing a sponsored video that's going to be dropping sometime within the next couple of weeks that I am really, really interested about. It is a penny stock, but it's like a penny stock ETF. And so I did want to warn you guys, the sponsored videos, I don't do them often. I only do them with companies that I like and with things that I would invest in myself. I have invested in this particular sponsored video into the underlying fund. And I'm, I'm very, I'm very happy with it. Um, but I'll be talking about that in the next video. But I did want to say that helps me do all these challenges because this money, sometimes it's hard to pull a thousand dollars out of somewhere. And so I do appreciate you guys for supporting me. You guys help me a lot and the sponsorships help me continue to do challenges like these. And I hope one day to be able to put $10,000 into each of these ETFs and watch what happens for you guys. But until then, I'm going to keep taking baby steps and I, I appreciate feedback. Let me know what you guys think about that. So that being said, we can see our dividends, IWMY 97 cents, not the lowest, but on the lower end, QQQY, we see 74 cents. This one is the lowest. So QQQY, what are you doing? You're down 3%. You're paying out less in dividends. I, here's what I think may happen. And again, I could be wrong, but as we see more nav erosion, we're going to see the dividends start to decline slowly. And sometimes they'll have crazy months depending on what happens in the stock market, but still it's looking like that's what's going to happen. WDTE, a new low as well. Not surprised there, even though it's down less than the other two, it's still dropping the dividend. QDTE, not an all time low, probably right around the middle at about 50 cents, which is crazy. Now remember, these are the number of shares I've updated YMAG to the roughly correct amount. Uh, but these are for this amount of share. It's not just the overall paid out dividend. We already checked that one out. Then we had XDTE with an in with 52 cents, a little bit lower, but still no, not even a little bit lower, three cents lower than the all time high, but still a phenomenal dividend, a crazy good payout. 
RDTE with an all-time high. I wasn't lying when I said it. They paid me 82 cents for my two shares, which is the best that we've seen since starting this account. Then we had YMAG with 31 cents, which is not surprising because it was a really low dividend. And so we kind of expected that. And then we have YMAX, which is a really solid dividend and a really solid return. And they paid me $1.23, a new all-time high. I should make a little clapping sound or something like that because that's absolutely crazy. But we got two all-time high dividends from RDTE and YMAX just this week. So what I'm going to do now, we're going to throw in some fun Excel math. And I'm going to add all of these all this data together. So we can see that the total here, let me hit enter. So it actually works. We've, paid, we've been paid out $7 and 40 cents from IWMY. And we're going to drag this calculation down and we can see that total total. We actually had $6 paid out from QQQY so far, $3 and 91 cents from WDTE. This is really interesting because IWMY is down the most, but has paid out the most dividends. So something to think about. WDTE paid out $3.91. QDTE paid out $3.55. And you might be thinking, oh, WDTE is better because it actually paid out more so far. Well, it's not always the case because our initial investment of WDTE was 84 cents and QDTE was 84.66 cents, but QDTE is holding up better price appreciation wise. Now, continuing on, XDTE lower again, $3.12. RDTE a pretty crazy $4.32. Then we get to YMAG, $5.96, and the king that we've seen so far, $6.73 from YMAX. This is crazy. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to do more fun math, and I'm going to do the total amount of dividends that we were paid out this week. One too many. We made $5.58 in dividends, a little bit lower from our beginning stuff, but that's mostly because we've seen a drop from over a dollar for IWMY and QQQY to where it sits now, even though YMAX and RDTE are paying out new highs. And our total amounts of dividends so far, we're going to do this again. We're going to do equals this with a bunch of pluses. There's another way you can do this, but I'm not great with Excel. Boom, $41 even. That's crazy. $41 even paid out in dividends absolutely wild. So if we cut the losers out, like let me pull Moomoo back up. If we cut the losers out, so four, I'm going to round it, five dollars, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dollars roughly. If we cut out just the losses that we saw, we would actually be doing really, really well. We'd have eight hundred and fifty four, fifty five dollars in the account and we would have a pretty solid dividend return. Of course, we would lose the, the other dividends from those, but still, Pretty, pretty crazy to see that. Now, I'm going to do a comparison of what we've seen with our total dividends invested and total return from the ETFs. I'll run some fun math for us, and I'll show you that in just one second. Okay, I think I have this figured out finally. We are going to do equals this number minus this number, which should be positive, yes, because they are all positive returns so far, but some much, much more than others. So we can see an insane return. We've seen very little from IWMY, $3, $3 return, which isn't great. And I'll, I'll pull the percentages up as well. 236 from QQQY, 227 from WDTE. This is price appreciation as well as dividends. And then we see start getting better. QDTE, 418. XDTE, 476. RDTE, just under $7. YMAG, $850. And YMAX, $12, $11.98, which is totally, totally insane. So to get our percentage, we're going to, this is going to look very, very funny, but we're going to divide this number by our initial investment, which is going to hit equals, which, oh, that looks awful. And it is, but trust me. And then we're going to do equals this multiplied by 100 for our percentage. And we see our percentage return right here in this box. Let me, let me make it pretty. So this is our percent return, which is crazy. So we've seen a two, 2.89% return. These are not terrible from the defiance funds, 2.8, roughly 2.3 to 2.7 and 2.9. So not bad. IWMY is not our biggest loser because they have paid out so much in dividends so far, but then we get into QDTE, which is, which is 3.2, 3.3%. 
So it's actually not doing way better than the Defiance funds like I thought, but it did come down a little bit last week, and that might be why. XDTE doing even better, five point or four point five five percent. RDTE just under an eight percent return, which is crazy as well. YMAG 8.9% return and YMAX with an insane return of 1363 in two months. In two months. This is wild. These percent returns are just crazy. And so what I'll do is we'll actually add, I'll do it up here. We'll add this number up and we're going to, whoops, I messed that up. We're going to figure out exactly this plus this plus this plus this how close we are to accuracy 44 dollars. so we are a little bit under because we have seen our total return of 44 dollars and 48 cents a couple bucks under nothing too crazy but still some insane insane returns i'm blown away by this i think it's really really cool i think the challenge has done really really well and i'm glad that you guys are enjoying it or at least i think you are let me know in the comments what you think if my math adds up because i always love having a second set of eyes on this stuff i really appreciate you guys for watching and i hope to see you in the next video